Canada needs to do better at protecting our youth. I get why she has house arrest. Um, I get um, all of that. I can't be upset at her for that. Our justice system needs to do better to protect our youth when, when things happen. Um, the part that I am satisfied with is being 20 years on the registry list. That is a huge win. Um, but you're right. We all lived basically under house arrest for years. Um, she she is allowed to go out her four hours um, a week to, for the necessities of life. She's allowed to take her children to doctor's appointments. She's allowed to go to school appointments. She's allowed to even attend work meetings because she runs her own business. So I can't be upset at her. It's it's the system yeah. and the system needs to do better. It has taken six long years, but finally justice has been served. Well, sort of a young man who resided in Cambridge, Ontario, was just 16 years old back in 2018 when he was taken advantage of by a person in authority. That would be his former soccer coach, Angela Sider, who was 42 years old at the time. Sider pursued an inappropriate sexual relationship with this boy. Allegedly, there are other victims too, but no one else has come forward. In any event, Sider was eventually charged with sexual offense of a minor from a person of authority as well as sexual exploitation. Earlier this month, in a Kitchener courtroom, Sider entered into a plea deal. She pled guilty to sexual offense of a minor from a person of authority, but the charge of sexual exploitation was dropped. Sider was sentenced to two years of house arrest. She must wear an ankle monitor and will be on the sex offender registry list for the next 20 years. And joining me now to weigh in on this sordid tale is the boy's mother, Donna Ferrari. Well, first of all, Donna, thank you so much uh, for joining me. You know, I read your victim impact statement, so I know how heartbreaking this has been for you. And it is nothing short of an absolutely incredible story for so many reasons. So let's begin at the beginning. Take us back to 2018 when your son was playing soccer. How did things unfold? I wasn't viewed as the mom. Um, I can tell you when uh, the end of the season, uh, we were at the last game, and uh, which is the first time that I had interactions with Angela. Uh, prior to that, I would wait in my car for him to be done um, uh, the game or whatever. So we never really had any interactions. Um, I was walking up and she says, are you mom? And I said, yes. And then after the end of them getting their awards, um, you just knew something was off with how she acted. And uh, then I found out that they were going to um, uh, Wonderland as a team party uh, within, I'm gonna say a week or so after. And then uh, I asked my son about it. He told me that, that it was going to be a team party. Um, multiple players were going and he wanted to go. So I dropped him off at the house. Um, when I picked him up that evening, things seemed off on the way that she approached him. So I was cautious. I asked him about it with what I seen in her actions. Um, he didn't really say much. Um, then I started asking more questions about her uh, because I found out that she was uh, messaging my son. I messaged her. I said, you're no longer my son's soccer coach. Please stop contacting him. Um, and, she and Donna, did not. Can I, can I uh, jump in here? What, were, what was the nature of those messages that Miss Sider was sending to your son? At that time, I wasn't aware of the nature. I just, his phone was going off all hours of the night and I had questioned him about it. And he told me it was her. Um, when, I, 
when I started asking more detailed questions kind of on who she was, I found out that she had given him a book um, to read during the soccer season. Um, and I believe it's called an aptitude uh, where you read it, you answer a bunch of questions and it tells you your personality and things like that, which is how she got to know my son. Uh, when I asked what her qualifications were, because he told me that he, uh, she was helping him. I said, helping you with what? My son is very, he wants to figure things out on his own. So I respected that. Um, but I did ask, what was she helping you out? And he said, I was trying to figure out things and she's just helping me. And I said, do you need to go speak to somebody? And he said, no, she was going to help me. I said, does she have qualifications? And he said, no. Um, but she knows people that do. So she acts as the liaison um, between different organizations is the gist of how everything was explained to me. And, and Donna, so, so we, if, if we fast forward the chronology, uh, we spoke off camera, you were having some discipline issues with your son, and it reaches the point, incredibly, where your son leaves your house and takes up residence uh, with Angela Sider, living with her family. Um, I, I mean, right off the bat, uh, that has right. to be considered I, inappropriate, I imagine. Correct. As a result of the back and forth and questioning, he was taking guidance from her. Um, so every time I questioned something, she would respond and get him to um, respond with a certain way. I. Uh, to the point that he felt after speaking with her that I was brainwashing uh, and manipulating him, which is why he decided to leave home. Wow. So, I, I mean, I, I bet you there are so many parents watching this and uh, they're just astounded that uh, this person in authority, uh, once again, going back to uh, 2018, your son is 16 years old. She's 42 and eventually this does become a sexual relationship is that correct correct i i can't answer what was going on in her head um i know that she believes that she was trying to help my son um but my son was never diagnosed with anything until he became in her care the alarming part is the organizations that she works with how did my son get into a doctor within a week of being in her care for di being diagnosed with something when there's parents out there that are waiting years to get their child to seek um, any sort of psychological testing? So that was the first red flag that nobody felt was a red flag. Um, every time I would call somebody, I was told that I should be happy my son's getting help. But my son didn't have any issues prior to this point of being diagnosed with anything. He never brought up anything to family doctors that we had. So how did this child get into the system within a week? Um, turns out that it's the same doctor that her children go to. And it's her adopted children. She doesn't have any biological children. I see. Um, and it, it just continued from there. I would call a hospital. I called front door. I called Lutherwood. All of the organizations that she was connected with. And everybody just told me that she's a great person. Wow. And I can only imagine, Don, at this point, you are going into full mama bear mode. You want to protect your son. Uh, you want to bring him home. Um, did, what, who were the authorities that you reached out to? Um, and I believe there's an interesting story with Lee Fitzpatrick. He is the director of community services for the Waterloo Regional Police. Um, can you tell us about your interaction with uh, Mr. Fitzpatrick? I was served a letter on September 4th, two days after my son left home. And um, it was a, a declaration giving uh, parental 
uh, guardianship uh, to the ciders. So again, hard to believe how how within two years of um, having a disagreement with my son on a Saturday by the Tuesday, um, get served with a paper that was signed by a lawyer. Uh, when I called him, I found out that he oversees the program in the high schools um, um, with the police officers. So I started to ask him his role and he very proudly told me what his role was. I said, um, do you ever meet these uh, students? Um, do you ever mentor them? Any contact? And then he stopped and asked who he was speaking with. And then I told him who he was speaking to. And then he told me that uh, he was with a very nice family and I corrected him and said, no, he's with a suspended soccer coach because by this time, Soccer Canada, not Cambridge Youth Soccer, Soccer Canada did the ruling to have her suspended uh, because when I went to Cambridge Youth Soccer, they didn't take action to what I felt was fast enough. So I did go to Soccer Canada and they that day they had immediately suspended her. Uh, for uh, six months and I was telling him this and he insisted I wasn't speaking of the same person and I insisted I was and I gave the um, Angela and Joel Sider's name to where he was and he didn't believe uh, what I was telling him. And I think the crux of the matter regarding Mr. Fitzpatrick, uh, you told me off camera, uh, Donna, that you later discovered that Angela Sider is a personal friend of his, allegedly. Um, I, I don't know. To me, that puts him in a blatant conflict of interest. Um, did you address this matter with him? I didn't address that matter at the time. Um, I, I know that um, because she wrote an email to him um, with my son copied on that email, um, stating that if he had any questions or concerns to what I had said, that to um, please reach out to them and have that discussion. Um, they they sit on a couple of the same uh, boards together. Um, uh, and that that's how their connection and, and friendship had started. It, it, it's absolutely fascinating uh, to me, uh, Donna, this element of the story, and we will reach out to Mr. Fitzpatrick. We'll reach out to uh, uh, Angela Sider as well. I doubt uh, they'll talk to us, uh, but nevertheless, we'll try to get their side of the story. Um, let's fast forward the tale a little bit uh, further. When does your son finally come back to your residence? May of 2019. Wow, so almost a year has gone by in which he is living in the house of his soccer coach. Correct. In incredible. And what were the chain of events uh, that occurred that you finally got your son uh, to come home? I had to, in a sense, almost befriend this woman um, in order to get information because she successfully had me removed off of his medical records. She successfully was able to move him from one school board to another school board, um, eliminate all the things that a parent should be involved with, with their child. Um, she was successful at having me removed from all of that. Um, so I almost, in a sense, had to befriend her make like I was on her side in order to get information of my child. Um, then he started reaching out to me, asking me if I would pay for a car, asking me if I would pay for an apartment. So I knew that he wanted out of there. Um, and she was very distraught that I would agree to paying for these things for my son. Um, I, as my mother, uh, as mother, didn't care what the cost was. I knew I had to get my child away from her and, and her husband. Uh, through that time is when I also demonstrated and I had to sit there very quietly and accept it. Um, 
watching her pull out a tackle box full of meds. And that's when I quickly realized that's how she has been controlling my son. Mm. Um, I left that day um, and I knew I just had to keep fighting. Um, every time he called me to go look at apartments, one time she had to come. And again, I had to bite my tongue to make her feel like I was on her side so that he could come home. This is how groomers are getting away with it. This is how groomers are are connected to young, vulnerable teens. They make these teens believe that wholeheartedly they want to help them. And when they get them in their control it is when the abuse happens. Um, January of 2019, she went to legislation and stated how she has three children and how one came to her um, from unforeseen circumstances at home with Lutherwood asking for government funding. So she's getting government funding for her organization that she runs. She's helping other nonprofit organizations get funding. So it's our tax dollars that are paying for this pedophile. This story, Donna, just gets worse and worse. Once again, let's fast forward to finally the police get involved. They lay charges. Um, what were the uh, chain of events that led to that? She wouldn't leave my son alone after he came home. Um, I got the call that I had to pick my son up. So, of course, I went there, picked him up um, because they um, had an altercation. Um, she laid hands on my child. She admitted that in a text to me uh, because my son apparently got up in her face, didn't touch her, was just in her face, um, and she put her hands on my son. Again, I just had to get him out of there. So mm -hmm. I couldn't address any of that as I would have wanted to as a mother. Um, once he got home, he she just wouldn't leave him alone. Uh, she would call to make sure he went to school. She would call to say that he had, and I'm like, please leave my son alone. And then she wouldn't until the day that she showed up at my house, uh, which happened to be shortly after, within a week after his 18th birthday. She gave me a gift. She gave my son a card. Um, and it just didn't sit well with me. And I'm like, she just isn't leaving us alone. I found out that um, any of the appointments that my son went to, she had to be in the room again, as uh, a sign of a groomer so that he doesn't say anything. Um, and w I went to the police and I said, I just need a peace bond against this woman. I need her to leave me and my family alone. Um, and that's when the police interviewed my son and he let them know everything because the gift or the card that he she dropped off was confessing her love to my child um are you happy with the sentence that angela cider was given and secondly uh donna do you kind of um prefer uh and i know your son would have to relive harsh memories but would you have preferred that the case went to trial i wouldn't prefer my son to have to relive what he went through because the statement of fact that was read out in court um, was extremely hard for me to read or, or to hear um, because him and I hadn't spoke of any of the evidence that we had. Um, his evidence, obviously, of the abuse, my evidence of the text messages and all of the things that um, I had to prove that she had taken over legal guardianship of my child. Um, well, I say legal. I don't know that it is actually legal, um, but definitely submitted papers to say so. Um, I would have wanted it to go to trial so that all of the organizations that are connected to her, that have been hiding her, um, are outed. Mm -hmm. So that the school boards um, know that they can't just accept paperwork and, and not look into it further. Um, for Lutherwood and Front Door and Children's Aid and the hospitals. Um, 
all of the organizations that she's connected to in the water region, I would have wanted them to be noted. Canada needs to do better at protecting our youth. I get why she has house arrest. Um, I get um, all of that. I can't be upset at her for that. Our justice system needs to do better to protect our youth when, when things happen. Um, the part that I am satisfied with is being 20 years on the registry list. That is a huge win. Um, but you're right. We all lived basically under house arrest for years. Um, she she is allowed to go out her four hours um, a week to, for the necessities of life. She's allowed to take her children to doctor's appointments. She's allowed to go to school appointments. She's allowed to even attend work meetings because she runs her own business. So I can't be upset at her. It's, it's the system. Yeah. And the system needs to do better because the th there's no real punishment. Like she, she, I, I had my son taken away from me for nine months. I was a grieving mother for nine months and I fought the system. And every time I would go to the police, every time I'd go to the school board, every time I'd go to the hospital, every time I would call these agencies to tell them what she was like and what she was doing, the, I just, I, I got closed doors, but I knew I had to keep fighting for him. And I will continue to advocate for change. I wanna quickly read to our audience Donna, an excerpt from your victim impact statement. Uh, I found it very moving. And uh, here it is, quote, Today is about holding Angela accountable for her actions. However, as a mother, no amount of sentencing will be enough for the physical and psychological damage Angela caused not only to my son, but to our whole family. From the day my son left home, and the nine months that followed, I was grieving the loss of a child. After my son was able to escape and return home, it's been heartbreaking to watch the emotional scarring that had been caused to a once honor roll, vibrant, happy, wore his heart on his sleeve kid to someone that wanted to be left alone and isolated himself." End quote. That's pretty powerful stuff, uh, Donna. Right now, it's six years later. I, I guess your son is uh, approaching 22 years of age. He's back at your house. What is his frame of mind uh, now that he's finally being separated uh, from Miss Sider? He wanted her held accountable. He wanted her to say, yes, I did this. Um, he didn't fully get that. She did plead guilty to the one charge um, by taking the plea deal uh, to avoid us going to trial. Um, so she was um, given credit for that. Um, but as I, I he, it will not define who he is. Um, but he he's doing as well as can be expected. He's getting on with his life. Um, I see the kid that I raised. Um, the I, I see life in him again. Um, I see him laughing again. So it, it's he's getting there mm. um, every day. Uh, you, you don't know what you're going to get, um, but uh, it's it's a process, and and he's doing good.